Hey, this is James, Western Rolling Academy. What are the differences in the processes? What kind of equipment are different? Let's dive into it. Let's start over here with the wire feed, with the flux cord. This actually has dual shield wire in it right now, so that means a flux cord wire with a shielding gas is a process. This is attached to a wire feed machine. The best way to do this, I like to get braced up, something like this down here on the table, get where I want to be, get my wire about a half inch away from the work, pull the trigger, and as it starts to strike up, you start moving. Move as that puddle needs you to move. If it gets a little narrow, you slow down, it gets a little wide, you speed up, right? When you're done, you let go of the trigger, wire stops, arc stops, easy peasy. There's a 50 pound spool of wire in here, it's endless work. These things will work you to death because that's what they're designed to do is a lot of welding. You can run stainless steel, you can run carbon, ink and high alloy stuff. Like you, you can do all of that on a wire feed, but you're not gonna take that out in the field and expect to build a, a pressure vessel out in the elements. They're gonna keep that in the shop where they need those long seams done accurately and cleanly without any interference of the weather. Next, we got our stick welder. Right, your stinger, we call this a stinger. It's also called an electrode holder. Out in the field, you have a 50 pound can of these rods, stick rods, welding rods, bead rod, depends on what you're doing. You take your stick, you see it's got a bare end on one side. You take that bare end, clamp it in this stinger like so, there's different angles. You can do it in a down angle if you need to, depending on where you're at, up angle, straight up and down or 90 degrees. The way I tend to do this one, throw it in that 90 degree angle. Again, get braced up so you're nice and comfortable. You wanna be solid when you do this. Now this is live. When it's in that stinger, the end of that stick is ready to go. You reach down, touch the work piece, and once your arc starts going, then you start manipulating that the way you want to. Again, if your puddle gets a little wide, you speed up. If your puddle gets a little narrow, you slow down. This is all the equipment, aside from the welding machine, that you need out in the field to weld if you're gonna do some piping. They make stainless stick, they make ink and L stick, uh, they make aluminum stick rod. But where stick welding excels, is when you need speed on a pipeline and you don't want to have to worry about the elements. You can run outside with a little breeze blowing on you, you know the sun shining on your back and you're just pounding along. You don't have to lug around a big wire feed machine at the same time. If you look at the difference between these two leads, that wire feed lead and this lead, they're quite a difference in size. You throw some 6010 in here, you run a route pass with 6010 on some carbon steel pipe and you can get it done quick. Those guys that do pipeline do it quick. Then we have the more complicated, more technical TIG torch, right? This is for gas tungsten arc welding. You got a tungsten on the end here. That's what initiates the flame. This is live when you're plugged into the machine. I like to hold it with my pinky behind the torch like this. Kind of keeps me from biting that stinger. When you set your cup down on there, there's a couple of ways to do this. You can walk the cup, which means you make contact with your workpiece in the cup, and then you weave that in a figure eight motion to get it to walk forward, right? You touch your tungsten to the table, and it initiates the arc, or you flick that wire across there, and it initiates the arc. Once you get the arc going, then you start doing that figure eight motion. Uh, this is more technical because you need two hands to operate this machine, right? One for your filler wire, one while you're walking a cup. It's like scratching your head and rubbing your belly at the same time. Get that wire down in your puddle and you start walking over it. Or, for those guys that are really good, we can do what they call freehand. Instead of walking a cup, you can set your hand down on the table like that, strike your arc, and then use your fingers to manipulate that weave side to side. Then you have your TIG torch, right? It'll do everything the same way. You can TIG carbon steel. However, when you need a high purity, really clean weld, that's where TIG is gonna excel. Stainless steel wire on 308 pipe, there's no additives, it's 308 straight through so uh, that's where the TIG is going to beat everything else is when you need that high purity no additive clean clean weld that's why they use it for aerospace and uh, nuclear power plants places like that because you need it to be absolutely perfect that's the differences between the three different processes hopefully that clears up a little bit of that welding industry it's a huge industry there's a lot of moving parts till that bead cools we'll see you on the next one